Hey everybody, this is Ashley again. I would like to do a tutorial showing you how to make and use a watermark in Adobe Photoshop Elements. Um, I did a tutorial on how to use GIMP. It's G-I-M-P, which is a free program that you can download online if you do not already have Adobe Photoshop, but a lot of people do have Adobe Photoshop, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial showing you how to use that program to do the same thing. But if you do not have it, then go online and download GIMP for free and then check out that tutorial um, that I made with that. And um, so, first thing I'm going to do is open my Adobe Photoshop, and I have Adobe Photoshop Element 6.0. I'm sure that's an old version. But I'm going to go to edit. And then it opens this up. The first thing I'm going to do is go to file, new, blank file. And then here you can set your inches, uh, pixels, centimeters, millimeters, whatever you like. This is fine for me. I always do a resolution of 600 because I like things to be um, a little bit more... Um, I don't know, you know, more pixels and all that good stuff per inch. So I'm going to hit OK. And this will bring this up. This is actually a watermark I made earlier today. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be your template here. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to hit your um, type pad. I'm sorry, I'm like drawing a blank on what I'm talking about <laughs> um, and then I'm going to draw a box to where I would like to type so the first thing I'm going to do is you know put my name or whatever I want it to say um, and then you can recenter it and do all that good stuff and then you know you can add more if you'd like So this is too big for me to add this whole address. You go up, you can go up here, and this is where you can change your fonts. Like, do you think I have enough fonts? I think I do. Um, <laughs> and then you can make it bold or whatever, and then you can change your size that, of your font that you want to use. So I'm going to change that to 9 points. Put that there. And then if I want this to be a little bit lighter... Then I can make it like a lighter gray. Like that. So. Now the next thing you can do. There's two different ways you can use these. Either you can go here. Click edit. Define brush. And then it brings up a little picture of it. And then it says sampled brush here. You can change that name or you can keep it there. I just hit OK. And then you can go to the picture that you want to add the watermark to. So I'm just going to um, pick one here. This is my son Grant. He's five months old. This is before he got in the bathtub. So, <laughs> um, And then you go to your brush tool over here on the left. Click that. And then come up here to this little box. And if you scroll... It brings up the assorted brushes or whatever. And then scroll to the bottom. And then it shows me some of the ones that I've made so far. So um, this one, I'm going to click the last one, will be the one that you want to click on because that will be your brush. So here it is. But if I click on that, then that's too big for my picture. So you want to come over here and size it down um, like this. 493. It depends on the size of your picture as to what size you're gonna have have to have it at. Cause, you know, you know, you could have it downsized a whole much a whole bunch more and have to have it on like a hundred and something. So, and um, but that's would we'll go there. But you can set how opaque you would like it to be up here. So you can make it super opaque to where you know you can barely see it. Over here, you change your color as to what color you'd like it to be. So if you want it to be green, then you can do that. 
if you want it to be to where you can really see it, then you use it like that. It'd probably be better if I showed you that on dark black. Um, so there's black. And you can see how the www.treehousestamps.com is actually lighter than the Ashley Bowen 2010. Um, and I did that by making it a little bit lighter gray. So usually I do about 55 and you know, but it's really whatever you want. So that's one way to do it. Now, another way you can use this is uh, take this and let's add a little bit of color to this just for the fun of it. And um, I have a copy up here, there's shapes and stuff. Um, So I'm just going to use copyright, and then I'm going to make that green just because. So you can do that. Now one thing, fun thing I found that I like to do is you can come to your brush tool again and come up here. And these are different brushes that actually will like stamp whatever you uh, design you choose. So like. For example, I picked this snowflake, and you can click that, and it makes snowflakes wherever you stamp them. So that's pretty neat. And then you can, um, the thing about the brush tool, like the first way we did it, is that it will always be one color. So if you pick black, it'll be black. If you pick blue, it'll be blue. Um, but this way you can have, you know, black, gray, and green, or whatever color you choose, um, and, you know, have it a variety of colors. So I'm going to scale this down like this, and then you can come over here, and this is the eraser tool, and if you right click that, there's an eraser tool, a background eraser, and magic. You're going to want to use a magic eraser tool, and then you're going to click your background, which... It warned me that I wouldn't be able to do that a minute ago, and I didn't heed the warning, I guess. Um, okay, let's try this again, sorry. It won't let me do it now since it, because sometimes if you jump from one thing to the other, it will not allow you to do that. So let me do this again really quick. Okay. You know, it gives you warnings, and I swear I just, like, ignore them half the time. So then when I go to do something, it totally messes me up. I'm sorry I did that in the middle of recording, but oh well. It happens. Okay, so I'm going to rescale that again. I made it all kinds of fun colors. Um... So, now I'm going to do the Magic Grace tool, and then, just like in GIMP, um, the gray checks means that your background is transparent. So, now, I'm since that's transparent, I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and then I'm going to save it to my desktop, and then you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Ashley's Watermark, and then this format, um, you're going to want to change this to PNG. Uh, ping files allow your background to stay, hit OK, um, transparent. So I'm going to close out of this, no. And then I'm going to go to open, and then click on desktop, because that's where I saved it. I'm going to open that up. And then you can come up here and so that you can view both of these at the same time. So I'm going to click my arrow and drag that on top of my photo. So it looks like that. 
and you can resize this to whatever you want and see how it allows you to leave the color in there I love that about this uh, the other way is much faster though so um, there's that now another thing you can do is come over here and click this and you can select layers so this is the background which is my photo and then this is the watermark and you can change how opaque you want that to be by doing that so then you can once you do that you can save as and then save your image like that so I'm sorry I made a boo-boo in the middle of all of it but hey I got it done so I hope this has helped you all I'll talk to you later bye